However, if you take the mass balance or energy balance, the in here is usually represented in terms of rate. It's the rate of momentum in minus the rate of momentum out and in here means into the shell out means out of the shell right generation can momentum be generated if you consider mass balance mass cannot be generated unless you talk about species back if you take if you talk about energy energy cannot be generated but momentum can be generated. How can we generate momentum? You apply force. Whenever you apply force to object, object gains momentum. Okay? So generation term here can be written as sum of force acting on the system. Then accumulation normally we take it to be zero as steady state. As steady state. Okay? So this is momentum balance. In detail, momentum in can be split into two parts. Molecular part. Molecular transport and convective transport. So you can transfer momentum from layer to layer, that's the molecular transport, into the shell. Or you can use the bulk, the flow of the bulk itself, to transport momentum into the shell. So it is divided into two parts. Out, divided into two parts as well. Molecular part convective part. Okay? Summation of this should give you combined flux in. Summation of that gives you combined flux out. For force here, normal force that acts and results in the change or generation of momentum in fluid can be any kind of force. But for this particular force, we have to look into the simplest one. The force here is due to gravity force. Alright? Okay? Gravity force. It 
fall down here by gravity. Okay? As soon as to be laminar flow, everything that we talk in this course to focus on laminar flow only. Okay? Suppose you have a tank, you put water in there, and water flow over the tank to that inclined plane, and it's going down there. Normally, normally, if you look for the movement of any object under gravity, the velocity is supposed to go faster and faster according to the acceleration by gravity force, right? What would happen if water slowing down due to gravity? Can, do you think that acceleration acting upon water as well? Yes. So what would happen if water flow down with acceleration? And don't tell me that velocity would get higher. What would happen to the shape of water itself? Not spread. Um, it could look like this. Initially, water would flow down like over the, that inclined plane to form a thin film. If amount of water is not great enough, the thickness of film here will be small. Alright? If the inclined plane here is very, very long, then effect from acceleration will be imminent. What happens is when you have water flowing, water down here should have higher velocity and water up here due to acceleration. But if velocity of the water down here is higher, that means it's trying to go away from this water. Right? As a result, water can no longer remain continuous water. Have you seen water flow down like waterfall? At first, it formed like a thin sheet of water going down. At the bottom, but lower than that, it was split. Split into several, several gaps. And the diameter on the size of the water sheet would shrink and go into the spray. The spinning like this is the cause by acceleration. Because water down here moves faster than this water can catch up. So expect into small, small parts. Alright? That's the effect from acceleration. In this course here, we will not consider that effect. So that means we will look into the area where the sheet of water still continuous sheet. And we will assume that water at different positions along the direction here will be the same velocity. That means we neglect the effects of acceleration at all. Okay? Now, if we say that acceleration effect is negligible, that means we focus the length to be small length. We cannot allow the length to be great, otherwise acceleration takes place. So we will consider only small part in the system, the length L. Okay? Cross, passing this length, acceleration takes place. Before this length, we call this one entrance effect. The velocity profile has not reached state yet. So there is some turbulence taking place before going down there. Upstream here, where the some turbulence takes place, we have to ignore it. We just focus our attention to only parts, the small parts, whereas the flow is totally laminar, undisturbed, no velocity, no acceleration effect. Okay? Assume that the thickness of this film is delta. And I'm going to enlarge the system with this picture. This is delta. This is L. Okay? And this is the start. Now, 
tell me if I set up the axis like this. If this is C axis and this is X axis, okay, the axis here will be a perpendicular. Normally, velocity, there will be velocity inside this system, right? There's, there's water flowing down and going up. I'm going to say that this part is our system. Okay? Within our system, water has velocity. And velocity V here is a vector, can be represented by three components. Vx, Vy, and Vz. 